Uh, good evening everyone so thanks thank you everyone for joining our meeting uh, so today our uh, division manager Savit Arjuna will uh, will teach, uh, give share some knowledge about tundra habitats uh, of the bird uh, habitat lecture series and, and now i'm handing over to my friend Savit so can yeah you can do your presentation thank you Anas. uh so i hope you all enjoyed the video and good evening. So today also we are going to learn about uh, a habitat. And it is also an interesting habitat of the uh, habitat series. So before learning about the habitat, uh, uh, there's a word. There's a word. So we have to learn about it because uh, that word is going to be needed for our future meetings and also today. So that word is biome. What is a biome? A biome is a community of plants and animals that have common characteristics for the environment they exist in. They can be found over a range of continents. Biomes are distinct biological communities that have formed in response to share physical climate. And there are five types of, types of biomes. They are aquatic biome, grassland biome, forest biome, desert and tundra biomes. So today we are going to learn about tundra biome. Now, what is tundra? So tundras are cold, harsh environments with distinct, distinctive biodiversity adapted to the, these uh, conditions. And there aren't any trees in this uh, habitat. So, so for most of the year, the tundra biome is cold, frozen landscape. So this biome has a short growing period, a uh, growing season actually, followed by harsh, harsh conditions that the plant and animals in the region need special adaptations to survive. And uh, only 20% of Earth's surface is covered by this tundra. In uh, tundra, there are two types. There are Arctic tundra and Alpine tundra. Uh, so let's start from Arctic tundra. So uh, before I, I forgot to mention this, uh, the uh, word tundra is a bit uh, unco uh, uncommon. So this uh, tundra is believed to come from a Finnish word called tantaria, which refers to a treeless plain. So this feature helps define the tundra. And another factor that helps define the vegetation in the tundra, uh, thus the tundra itself is the presence of permafrost a layer of permanently frozen ground just below the surface. So in the Arctic uh, tundra, there are only a small layer of uh, active soil, which is like in uh, Sri Lanka. There are uh, active soil. In Sri Lanka, there are a lot of active soil, no, but in uh, Arctic tundra, only a small layer is active. Underneath that, the uh, soil is permanently frozen. And that's why there aren't that uh, trees. Now you can see in the picture, there aren't trees. This picture is of a uh, treeless. Uh, this picture is about uh, Arctic tundra. In this, you can see there aren't any trees. There are small grasses, bushes, and shrubs. There are because uh, they, these grasses have small roots, and the layer and the active soil layer is also uh, small. No, that's why there are there aren't any trees. So the tundra is defined mainly by permafrost, lack of trees, and low biodiversity, and also harsh conditions. And uh, now let's learn about uh, what defined the Arctic tundra and the climate of Arctic tundra and uh, what lives in Arctic tundra. Now you can see uh, this is the location of Arctic tundra. The Arctic tundra is in the uh, Northern Hemisphere. You can see here, uh, this is uh, Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Finland, uh, Russia, and uh, here it is... Uh, and the, these are uh, these green colored parts are where the uh, Arctic tundra is uh, held. And so it is in the northern hemisphere, you all know, but uh, there are similar, similar habitats in the uh, southern hemisphere, uh, similar isolated lands in uh, Antarctica. But uh, those, uh, those, that, uh, those habitats are not considered as a tundra habitat because it is in the south hemisphere. And uh, the Arctic tundra, though very cold for much year, 
it is uh, said to be more strongly defined by its cold summer temperatures. Instead of winter lows, why? Because these low summer temperatures limit the growth of plants in the summer. Where in some like, like uh, taiga, longer uh, warmer summer temperatures allow for a better growing season. So, uh, and uh, in, the, uh, in the summer, the highest temperature in the summer is 16 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine it is, uh, it is actually uh, cold there? Even in the summer, the temperature is cold. But in the uh, uh, winter, this temperature is in below free, fro below frozen. It is below the uh, temperature is minus 28 degrees, while the extremes can dip to minus 70 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine how cold it is? And uh, in the uh, um, in the winter, the uh, the area is uh, completely dark, uh, dark, and it only a uh, it is very cold, very dark, and very windy. And in the uh, when the winter comes, there aren't that much uh, animals there. There are only few because and the and those animals which here are also uh, have a special adaptation because they live in uh, like minus seventy degrees Celsius of uh, temperature. Now in but in the summer it is completely the opposite. There is the sun for twenty four hours, even in the midnight. There is the summer. There's the sun actually. Now watch this video. This is a time lapse video of a uh, uh, midnight sun is sun in Arctic. Watch. Now this is actually. Uh, can you see it is night in? If if this time is in Sri Lanka, it is night. Now it is eleven o'clock. It is twelve in the midnight. Now see the sun is still there. Now this is one o'clock in the morning. See, the sun is there for 24 hours, but it is only in summer. So uh, why is that happening? Uh, it is happening because the, we all know that uh, planet Earth is uh, 23, 23 degrees uh, tilted. It is not uh, straight. It is a little bit tilted. So because it is tilted, when the, now this is the summer period. Now in the summer period, the Earth is, you think the sun is right here. Uh, I can draw, right? Think the sun is right here. Now the earth is when the earth is right here, it is uh, this way. It is uh, tilted this way. So this here is the uh, Arctic. Arctic here is the Arctic tundra. The sunlight is there for uh, even twenty four hours because the, we know that earth is rotating while it is rotating around the sun. When the earth is here, the, this top part uh, don't turn away. It is in the same position. So that's that's why the sun uh, the sunlight is there for the summer. But in winter, the uh, earth is here. So in winter, this part is completely dark. But in the summer, southern hemisphere, it is uh, uh, pretty much sunlight there. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's move on. Uh, now. Okay, so the Arctic tundra does not have a proper soil layer. Uh, that's because the uh, permafrost and uh, this, yeah. And uh, the Arctic tundra biodiversity is low compared to a tropical rainforest because the Arctic tundra is uh, a little bit uh, similar to a uh, uh, desert. Uh, there aren't that much trees and there aren't that much animals, but in the tropical rainforest, it is completely the opposite. There are trees, it's rain every, every time, and there are lots of animals and good biodiversity. But in tundra, there's low biodiversity. And the absence of uh, trees in tundra is partially due to growing season. In the Arctic, in the Arctic tundra, the uh, growing season is uh, very low. It means like uh, one or two months. They, the summer is for one or two months. But the uh, winter is for more than uh, nine or ten months. So be, be grow, the trees grow in uh, summer, no? but there's two months. There's only two months. And two, month, two months is not enough to a uh, tree to grow, right? And that's, that's why there aren't any trees. Even a tree uh, grew there, 
in the winter it will uh, fall down because in in the winter there's a, a lot of uh, wind there there's wind now uh, so let's move on to the birds in arctic tundra so actually these uh, birds information are not my knowledge i took this uh, information from a website called ebirds and it is an excellent website and you should all check it out it has uh, everything about birds and you can uh, they even have uh, audio clips where you can listen to the bird sound and there are video clips of its habitat and yeah the website is ebirds you you should check it out so the first bird here is yellow-billed loon. The yellow-billed loon is the largest loon bird in the world. It has a length between 30 to 38 inches and wingspan between 53 to 63 inches. Yellow-billed loons breed in Arctic tundra. They make nests in, during tundra vegetation in the shore of the mainland. This loon species spend most of the summer time in the large tundra lakes. In winter season, they migrate to southern Alaska in Columbia, in British Columbia. They primarily feed on small fishes and for fishes, molluscas and crustaceans. And the next bird is rock petrimony. So this rock petrimony is an Arctic tundra bird that inhabits in mount, mountainous and hilly regions of the northern Arctic between seasons. In winter, petromagins have pure white color. In summer season, they have a grayish brown plumage. So they, cha they change the color because of the predators. Now see, uh, this is pretty much hard to uh, observe this bird. Now see, this, this part is white. It is uh, camouflaging with the environment. But in the winter, it is said that, but in the winter, he is uh, completely white to camouflage with the uh, environment. So, uh, Actually, rock petromagins only have few predators like golden eagle as they live in remote areas of the Arctic Circle. So their diet includes flowers, berries, buds, and leaves. Let's move on. The next bird is peregrine falcon. The peregrine falcon is the fastest bird in the world. It reaches a top speed with between 200 to 240 miles per hour. So they live in all around the world except Antarctica. The name of the bird means wandering. It, so the peregrine means wandering. It reflects the high migratory behavior of the peregrine falcon. They breed in Arctic tundra and in next winter season, they migrate to South America by covering more than 15 miles. So the next one is the snow owl. The snow owl uh, is in, uh, actually in, uh, it is in also in uh, Arctic and Antarctica. So it is uh, a little bit strange looking. So they are known for their striking white plumage. plumage. The female snowy owls are slightly darker than males. Snowy owls have been eyesighted and uh, exceptional hearing. It helps them to catch the prey even in thick snow covers. Cover snowy owls primarily feed on lemmings. They remain in the Arctic Circle for all seasons, depend on availability of lemmings. Snowy owls also migrate to United States and Canada winter season. So, uh, does anybody have questions in these? Uh, about what, what we have to talk about. Uh, I think there's one question. Okay, so let's move on. So as a, why this is not working. As good stuff, uh, there are also bad stuff. So there are threats and human impacts to Arctic tundra. So the Arctic tundra is a very fragile environment. You know why? Because even if you uh, step a foot there, the whole habitat will be destroyed. It is that much fragile. So the another threat for this is global warming. The global warming is caused by us, we humans. So because uh, the global, because the trees are being cutted, 
and uh, the factories gases and those are also affecting the global warming when the global warming is occurred the ice in arctic the antarctic they started start to melt and that is a main threat to these uh, bird, birds and animals here and there's also uh, there's also found that there are uh, diamonds oils and gases in these uh, arctic tundra so people go there and uh, dig up not only small holes they dig up uh, thousand feet of uh, holes there to take the oils and gases and and also the air pollution air pollution also there because of the factories gases car gases and that's also a uh, that's why the mainly this uh, and also this arctic uh, tundra is being destroyed day by day and you can see here the remain of birds who died after the exxon valdez oil spill in alaska 1989 now see the, all the birds covered in oil now see we are destroying the environment okay so uh, as you remember uh, i told you that there are there's another type we called about now we have learned about arctic tundra next is the alpine tundra the alpine tundra is a unique biome in that that it's found all over the globe but only on tops of the tallest mountains uh, which temperature and rainfall usually determine the other biomes this one is defined mostly by elevation this elevation causes uh, extreme conditions which create a unique tundra environment where only the ha hardiest plants and animals can survive so you we all know that uh, more we climb top the more the more there less oxygen in the top in the top of the mountain there aren't that much oxygen now there are animals but they have adapted there they have adapted to live there okay so the uh, now this is the map uh, this is a map but in uh, this is a uh, we can't say the exact location of alpha in tundra they are on top of the mountain but in sri lanka there isn't alpine tundra because these are the sri mount mountains in sri lanka that are not that much high but here you can see these are the alpine tundra mountains the blue colored places okay so the alpine tundra is an interesting biome because it is not found in a certain latitude like most biomes but instead of high latitudes in the mountains located in both the northern and southern hemisphere this biome is uh, defined by the harsh conditions brought, brought on the high elevation such as uh, high dry winds low temperature poor soil and a distinct lack of trees and uh, this alpine tundra is uh, pretty much uh, similar to a uh, arctic tundra because there aren't any trees so here the more you climb in the top top of the mountain there aren't trees because there isn't there isn't that much oxygen now you can see there are small uh, plants but it is a uh, hard to uh, photosynthesis here so now let's uh, learn uh, what is alpine tundra the climate and what lives in this alpine tundra so uh, it is a treeless you know you already know that uh, and the growing season is approximately 180 days and it is also it is also similar to arctic tundra i, I told you that it is also the same because the the growing season is less the grow, because of the growing season is, is less there aren't that much trees okay in here it is not uh, that much uh, cold so in the temperature in summer is 3 degrees celsius to 12 degrees celsius and in the winter it is minus 12 degrees celsius and in here the uh, here the uh, soil is a uh, <clears throat> drained well drained so let's move on so plants here uh, oh, so now you can see uh, this is this is uh, not a bird this is this is uh, a relative to rabbit this uh, animal is called a pika now rabbits rabbits have long ears no but uh, this animal this pika is adapted to this environment when it is it has a uh, short ears because uh, when we have short ears we can store more uh, heat in our ears so that's why i took and you can see the uh, arctic tundra the the alpine tundra pictures okay uh, to okay let's move on 
the birds in alpine tundra. So the first T is the hairy woodpecker. It is a medium-sized woodpecker, common and widespread across North America, as far south as Western Panama. Black and white plumage is nearly identical to the smaller downy woodpecker. Focus on the bill. Hairy, hairy has a longer bill, about the length of the head. Also look for clean white outer tail feathers. Some variations in color across range, birds in Western, not north america and especially uh, central america are brownish within limited white in the wing occurs in wooded habitat with large trees familiar familiar visitor to backyard feeders especially found of suits called suits calls include a loud peak and a fast rattle stronger than the downy woodpecker okay the next one is the buff belied pipit the buff belied pipit or American pipit is a small songbird found on both sides of the Northern Pacific. It was uh, first described by Marmaduke Tunstall in the 1771 Ornithologia Britannica. It was uh, formally classified as a form of water pipit. Now this is, the, this is called the Kia, the world's only true alpine parrot. So it is found only on the South Islands of New Zealand. Large and olive green plumage, not scarlet underwings, visible to flight. Females are smaller than males with uh, shorter bills. Juveniles have a yellow eye ring and a paler crown. Gives a distinct loud kia called more, mostly in flight. Very inquisitive uh, toward people and their, their cars within the mountain range and sky fields at huts and along mountain roads. Kia are often called the clowns of the mountains due to their curiosity. They like to investigate backpacks, boots, skins, snowboards, and even cars. Now you can see uh, it is uh, investigating the antenna of the car. And it is not uh, like other birds. It, uh, it like to stay with humans. It is uh, mostly staying with humans. So let's move on. And this is water tail termagin. The chicken like bird found in tundra with a mix of frogs and mossy ground core. Plumage changes throughout the year in winter. Both sexes are pure white as summer progresses. Male develops grayish brown feathers on head neck and back, generally quite splotchy. Some are females in pale golden within intricate black and white markings, markings. both sexes similar to other pitramagins, special, special but uh, smaller with distinctly white outer tail feathers, generally uh, found singly or in pairs in summer, forms small flocks in winter and feeds mainly on Plants. Now you can see pictures of that bird. Now uh, there are threats and human impacts to alpine tundra. The climate change. The climate change is occurred because of the greenhouse gases and also deforestation. Now the only thing we can do to uh, stop the climate change is grow more trees because uh, the climate is changing when the climate change the uh, it is it is a uh, difficult for the animals who have living who are living in the alpine tundra and uh, because the oil the gases and all of those are found the roads are developed to, to go there when they are rot uh, the animals will easily get uh, killed because they got get heated to a uh, windscreens of uh, cars and they fall down and that's about and and the only thing, as I mentioned, the only thing we can do, the best, it is the least thing we can do to grow trees, okay? And also, uh, to, uh, we, can, we cannot exactly uh, stop greenhouse em emission, uh, but uh, we can start using electric cars, but it is, I know it is, the price is very much high, but uh, it is one of the best things we can do because cars and uh, diesel cars, produce a harmful gas for the uh, what the uh, environment so and when talking about ornithology the uh, ornithology field is cannot be uh, dis discussed to online lessons 
you have to go out to the nature and observe about birds learn about birds you go you we have internet we can go to the internet and search anything about birds uh, that's what you do we can't just uh, learn about birds through online and it's pretty hard to learn about birds through online okay so uh, that's uh, all i have to say and that's everything i have to teach about teach about uh, tundra habitat and thank you for joining today's meeting and Good luck. Thank you. Back to you, Anas. And yes. any questions? Yes, thank you, Savit, Savit uh, to you know, sharing the knowledge about Tundra Habitat. And yes, if you have questions, uh, uh, type them and send it through the chat box. Uh, we don't have much time, so it's better if you can send it very quickly. So there's one question called what are the birds adaptation, what are the bird adaptation to alpine tundra? I think we'll have to join again because uh, he's having a connection problem and the meeting will only be there for one minute. Oh. Can anybody uh, remember the question? that person asked well uh, he said uh, what are the bird adaptation to the tundra climate oh i'll find tundra climate. So, yeah so the uh, adaptations the they grow feathers that is the main uh, adaptation uh, even the animals like uh, uh, even the animals have a lot of fur because it helps them to be warm and uh, they also have a uh, on the uh, they have feathers in the feet actually in birds uh, they have feathers in the feet to uh, keep them warm because they step on the snow and they will be clo cold and growing feathers are the uh, the uh, best uh, adaptation for them yes uh, any more questions So they are growing feathers like to, like we are we wearing shoes. The, fe the feathers in their feet are like the shoes of uh, us. Uh, I think there aren't any questions. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, there's a one is science adaptation of animals to high elevation is called acclimation. It's not a question, it's just uh... ah, okay. I think uh, there aren't any questions, so shall we end the meeting, Anwas? Yeah, it looks like it, so uh, yeah, let's end the meeting. Okay. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much.